Hello, welcome to the third video in our mini lecture series about acid-base disturbances and their clinical impact. So far we talked about the importance of blood pH regulation, keeping it at about pH 7.4. We talked about the different buffer systems that were involved with CO2 carbonate being the most important one. And we already talked about how the pH is regulated by functioning of kidneys and lungs. Well, actually we talked mostly about the lungs, so it's time to pay a little bit more attention to the kidneys. Uh, we dealt with clinical cases of acid-base disturbances, and now we are going for the fourth example, and this is medication-induced alkalosis, and you will see that this has to do with meddling with normal kidney function. So why do we meddle with normal kidney function? Uh, because occasionally we have problems in the amount of water that the body retains. And of course, you know that this is called udema, and the udema um, uh, ha has to be treated as quickly as possible. And you have to increase the amount of water that is leaving your body via urine. And one of the best things you can do is uh, playing around with the ions that are secreted by the kidney, because due to osmotic processes, the water will follow the ions. And um, we will see that there are quite a lot of exchangers of ions uh, in the kidneys that have certain specificities and the uh, clinical treatment is interfering with their normal processes. But you will see that that will give rise to problems in blood pH regulation. Um, so, what are we talking about? We are talking about diuretics, so uh, treatments that will increase uh, the loss of water from your body. And we have two of them, loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics, and they interfere with different kind of exchange mechanisms in the kidney. If we look at the kidney in a schematized fashion, so here we have a, um, a loop that um, secretes uh, water, and actually the kidney does that in a rather strange fashion. First, it throws out everything, and then it starts to bring back into the body um, the stuff in the urine that you don't want to lose, like certain ions. And you can see a few exchangers shown over here, and you can also see, see that the treatments that we just discussed, the thiazides and the loop diuretics, interfere with um, the retention of these kind of um, ions in the body. Um, so how does that influence uh, the blood pH? Well, actually, there are two kinds of mechanisms that we uh, see occurring or that are discussed in this context. Uh, first of all, if your, uh, um, if your secretion of water increases, your blood volume will go down. And this is monitored by uh, the renin angiotensin aldost uh, aldosterone system. And this will upregulate the uh, aldoster uh, aldoster aldosterone, sorry, there we go again. And this will interfere with um, an exchanger that normally uh, takes up a um, sodium from your urine and exchanges this for either a potassium or a proton a potassium ion or a proton. But that means that you have an increase in the secretion of protons, and that means that your blood pH will go up. Um, due to these kinds of uh, difficulties, sometimes uh, another kind of treatment is um, used that interferes with this second mechanism that I just described. Because this system, if it is influenced by aldosterone, you will see um, uh, also being uh, triggered because uh, in the kidneys it is noticed that secretion of sodium has increased. Uh, the kidneys try to resorb as much sodium as possible and that means that exchange for protons again occurs and again uh, in this mechanism the pH of your body and of your blood goes up. So, let's see what occurs in the Davenport diagram. We can see that this is metabolic alkalosis because more protons leave 
uh, your body via the urine, the amount of protons in your blood gets lower. That means that the carbonate buffer goes up and you have a metabolic alkalosis as shown in the Davenport diagram over here. So if you don't want these kind of problems, what are the alternatives? Well, first of all, you can just interfere with uh, the last system. If you don't exchange uh, sodium for protons anymore, uh, so these are called uh, uh, potassium or uh, proton sparing diuretics, you don't have the loss of protons and you don't have these kind of side effects. So we talked about the relevance of uh, monitoring pH when we treat uh, people, uh, for instance, for udema. Uh, we now understand the cause of alkalosis because it's induced by diuretics that interfere with normal kidney function. And we discussed a little bit the different treatment options and models to explain what is actually occurring and why blood pH is influenced. Okay, and that was it. Thanks for your attention.